For us at Percolate, China is an important market because it has today's largest population of internet users, and it's also the largest mobile market. China has a population of about 618 million internet users. That's about twice the size of the American population. And in America, the majority of people who want to be online are connected to the internet. But barely half of the Chinese population is connected. So of the 618 million internet users, 500 million of those people access the internet on a mobile device. So as you look at the different categories of social platforms, whether it's microblogs, messaging services, or video and gaming services, what you're going to see is that most of these platforms and apps tend to have very, very overlapping features. So a messaging app will also have social sharing. It'll also have games. It'll also have music and mobile payment and virtual goods and all of these things rolled up into one. Without a doubt, whenever we talk to brands about Chinese social media, the first platform that comes up is Weibo. So Weibo is a type of microblogging platform. What's happening now is that Weibo is heavily censored in China. So you have to register not only with your name, but with your government ID number. And as a result, their usage is tumbling. So last year, Sino Weibo lost 28 million users, or about 9% of its user base. That's a pretty alarming drop. And yes, this might be a temporary decline because of political conditions, but at least for the moment, we're seeing people turn to other services. The messaging service in China is WeChat. It's a mobile messaging service. It has 82% of the market share in terms of messaging services. So uh, you can have your friends basically here, and you can send each other messages, uh, either like text messages, you can also send voice messages, uh, and you can send like stickers, which are virtual goods that are very, very popular. And then you can also share social moments, and you, know, you can share your pictures. There's also a mobile payment scheme that they've just rolled into this. So a really good example of a mobile-first technology. You also have totally different platforms like YY, which is like WhatsApp meets Zynga meets American Idol. Everyday people like you and me in China go on YY and they do everything from sing karaoke to host tutoring lessons and you can amass a personal audience. If you like the performers uh, singing or whatever, you can give them virtual goods and then the performer can redeem those goods for cash. So there are people on YY who literally make tens of thousands of dollars by singing karaoke in their spare time. YY is totally different from anything that we have here. So what you're seeing as we look at these different platforms is that there are a couple of trends amongst Chinese platforms that hold true. Uh, they tend to have mobile-first technology. They tend to have a Swiss Army knife approach in terms of their functionality. Uh, many of them center around virtual goods. And most importantly, they tend to appeal to a very specific audience. When you want to understand China, in order to understand how it's different, you have to look to the cultural underpinnings of very specific audiences. So consumers in China are going to vary dramatically based on their geographic location. This is going to affect their consumption habits depending on the affluence and the status of the city where they live. So if you look at the tiered city structure in China, you have major metropolises like Beijing and Shanghai, uh, then you have slightly smaller cities like Qingdao, where I was born. Slightly smaller city, lower average income than a place like Shanghai or Beijing. A 25-year-old woman in a city like Beijing is going to have very different consumer habits, aspirations, motivations than a woman of the same age in a tier 3 city like Shenyang. Another way to think about audiences in China is by sociodemographics. So a couple examples of these are, for example, the Fu Dai, which literally translates into rich second generation. So they have had the income of six revenue generating adults indulging their whims since early childhood as the only child and grandchild of their family. So what you see with their spending habits is very unique to that particular group. Uh, you also have single men and women in China who are under a tremendous amount of pressure to get married early. Um, you also have tourists. By 2015, Chinese tourists abroad will spend more than all of the world's global luxury shoppers combined. 
this is an insane number. And when you dive a little bit deeper into that, what you'll discover is that those purchasing habits are actually driven by cultural practices like gifting. So if you are someone who is from mainland China, um, when you travel abroad, you are expected to bring back gifts for everybody that you know. That type of cultural practice also manifests itself in technology in innovation. So when you look at virtual uh, goods on Chinese social platforms, they're largely driven by the practice of giving. While there are very unique audiences in China, and it's important to understand their motivations and their aspirations and the characteristics that define them, you also see these underlying cultural practices that really drive innovation and translate into online behavior. When you think about the massive scale in China, the innovation that's coming out of China is a direct result of the very unique conditions that exist there. And that results in technology that's very different from our own. And we're just beginning to feel the impact of this. This is no longer a distant market for, for us. We're going to see technologies emerge from here that are going to compete with our own and that are going to begin to filter into our everyday lives. And in order to understand the opportunity that that offers, and in order to capitalize on it, we have to dig deeper than just the surface value of what are these technologies and what are these platforms. We have to dive into what are the cultural practices that actually drive this type of behavior and drive this type of innovation.